what is black power? Now, in recent years, people have thought black power was throwing up your fist and, you know, grabbing a gun and disrespecting every white person you saw while telling them, don't fuck with me, I'll shoot you. Black power. Um, <laughs> that is what black power has kind of been reduced to. But as I think about it, I think black power is leverage. And um, in this, if we look at the world stage, we understand that different countries, um, you know, they occupy, you know, higher places on the social economic ladder than other countries. And um, yeah, I just think if black people don't gain leverage, they won't understand what power actually is. What is leverage? Um, leverage is the reason why in America you can have a war on terror, okay? In America you can have a war on terror. Now, war on terror was a war on Islamic terrorism. Now, during this war on terror um, episode, let's say in America's history, unarmed black men were still shot more killed more than unarmed Muslim men than unarmed Arab men and I'm not saying to do it I'm saying this is leverage if unarmed Muslim men were being shot down at the rate during the time of you know the uh, the war on terror if unarmed Muslim men were being shot somebody would have got on the phone to the president someone from a Muslim country Saudi Arabia, I don't know, Qatar, Dubai, someone with leverage would have gotten the phone to the president and said, yo, my motherfucker, why are my people being shot down at this rate? Didn't you know that we invest in your country and we have a relationship with oil or gas, etc., etc.? Stop this shit quickly. And what you would have saw is things change because they have leverage. The reason why I think black people can be, in America specifically, can be treated the way they are is because they don't have leverage. They think they do. They think, they think money and earning a lot of money gives them leverage, which it does to some degree. But you have to ask yourself what you actually um, hold. And I don't think black people hold that much. Now, it's no secret that black people are Africans and Africa is the richest a piece of real estate on the planet Earth. So we have leverage, but we don't own leverage. The reason why a lot of the... The reason why black people don't have power, in my opinion, as well, is because they repeat the same behaviours. Now, I've, I've not been on this planet for that long, okay, but during my time on this planet, I've watched black people repeat some of the same behaviours over and over and over again, and they expect different results. And I'm just saying, if, you, if we don't start to change our thinking, because that's how things change, by changing your thinking. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect something different. Black people are some of the most stubborn people to want to change their thinking. This is what this, I'm black, and I watch and I interact with them, and I say to myself, do you want X to happen? I say to them, do you want X to happen? Yeah, okay, well, you're going to have to change your thinking. You're going to have to start thinking like this. We occupy the bottom of the social economic ladder globally. Globally, we occupy the bottom of the social economic ladder. But we're not willing to change our thinking. Because many people, not just black people, but the general population have a problem with changing their thinking. If you aren't prepared to change your thinking to get a certain result, then I would question your dedication to wanting to get something done. Knife crime, poverty, gang violence, all these things are relatively new phenomenons within the black experience. I want people to understand this. Like, the ghetto, quote-unquote, is only, what, 80, 80, 80 years old, maybe. Okay, it's a social engineered condition. It's not your natural state of being. Being in the ghetto, when black people say, oh, I love my hood, I love my ghetto, I love my neighbourhood, and I look at the neighbourhood and I say, what's to love? Okay, Fine, all your family are there. You can love your family. Fine, all your friends are there. You can love your friends. But the actual neighborhood, you can find poverty there. Drugs, 
gang violence, knife violence, poverty. What's to love? This is what I'm trying to understand. That whole mentality of, oh, we love our hood, we love our ghetto, needs to change. Because it's not your natural state of being. Your natural state of being, human beings in general, is in nature. That's why we're constantly trying to get back to nature. We want a holiday. We want to feel the sun on our face. We want to feel the sand on our feet. We want to feel the wind on our face. We want to feel the water. We want to get in nature. We want to do hikes. Want, because our natural state of being, something within us is saying, get back to nature. That is our natural state of being. A concrete jungle where there's crack, knife crime, um, gang violence is not the natural state of being. Don't love that. Please do not do not love that. Okay? But please do not love that. That is not our natural state of being. It's a social engineer condition. Now, one of the things that we need to change is our interaction with trauma and things that are traumatic to us. Things we need to start identifying also the things that benefit us and the things that don't. If something bad, this is what I've noticed, if something bad happens within the black community, black people do the same thing. Petition, march, scream and shout. There's no work being done. Like no one's digging in their pockets to actually get something done, like en masse. Black people in America specifically, it was uh, estimated that they would be, if they were a country, they would be the 15th, biggest country in the world that's how much revenue they generate they generate billions each year but they still occupy the bottom of the social economic ladder this means that your thinking is messed up it because you've got the you've got these you've got the economics to change some of your position to get leverage but you're not using it which means your thinking is the reason why you won't do it or reason why you can't do it so we've definitely got to change our thinking we think, a lot of us think praying helps. Now, we've been praying to Abrahamic gods for 1,400 years. And for 1,400 years, we've still been at the bottom of the social economic ladder. So, God doesn't help. You know? And that's another part of the thinking that we have to change. Thinking that we can pray our way out of a situation. Thinking that praying is going to help us do something now you can have faith i'm not trying to take faith away from people but what's that without actually doing something we have been we are, we are one of the only people if we think about it it's a confidence thing we are one of the only people on the planet to worship gods that don't represent us chinese god represents them indian god represents them european god represents them Everyone else God represents us. We look at our quote-unquote God and it's a European or it's an Arab God. And I say, well, where's the confidence in that? Where, where's your confidence in putting your faith in something that is not you? If you want quote-unquote black power or leverage, you are going to have to be confident within your own stuff. Black people are not confident within their own stuff. Now... Our history goes back further than anybody else's. This is what's very interesting. You can find the oldest calendar in South Africa, dated at 75,000 years old. 75,000 years ago, African people were building calendars in South Africa. If you move up through Africa and go into Central Africa, into the Congo, what you'll find is something called the Ashango bone. The Ashango bone is the oldest mathematics device known to mankind found in the Congo, dated at 25,000 years ago. Go further up into Nubia, you'll find what they call Nabda Playa. Nabda Playa is another calendar dated at 11,000 years old. Black people have lost their confidence, which is why they don't have black power. If you knew that you came from this lineage, if you knew this is where you came from, you would probably have confidence. But a lot of black people think that we were just sitting around waiting for Arabs and Europeans to invade Africa and show us the way to go. Our problem with power is confidence. We must be confident enough to gain leverage in the stuff that is ours. Not anybody else's stuff. We need to be unapologetically ourselves, just like everyone else is unapologetically themselves. And if we don't change our thinking, and if we don't gain confidence, we will occupy the bottom of the social economic ladder for years to come. Don't you want black power?